those free trade zones which, uh, which now proliferate around the world. They're fundamentally done for one thing and that is to keep trade unions out. They are all about union busting. They are all about uh, they are all about giving capital free reign to oppress workers and to fleece as much as they can out of out of the sweat of their labour. In Sri Lanka, there's also the addition uh, the additional uh, peril to those workers. That is that the Sri Lankan government uh, isn't what you'd call democratic. The Sri Lankan government, in fact, is prone to disappearing certain of its uh, of its opponents or perceived opponents. Uh, in what they refer to in Sri Lanka as white bands. And it's in that, in, in that uh, environment that Anton Marcus and the Free Trade Zone Union of Sri Lanka have been operating. And unbelievably, and almost uniquely around the world, they have been successful in unionising the Free Trade Zone. That in itself is achievement enough. But what has occurred is that the union in organising sought to obtain decent paying conditions for the workers on site. And the members of the union organised, and they organised really well. What they didn't plan on though was Ansel management, first of all, sacking their, uh, their executive committee. And secondly, of course, once, once the workers protested that, then sacking the members of the union. Nearly 300 people were sacked in 2013 for standing up for their rights. Shame. Rights which supposedly are endorsed by the ILO, the International Labour Organisation, and rights supposedly endorsed by both the Sri Lankan and Australian governments. It's outrageous and we protested at the time, but unfortunately those protests have fallen on deaf ears. In the lead up to the, the activities that we've undertaken here today, 